Hello and welcome to the Warhammer 40k book club. This is episode number six, 17 in which we're discussing War of Secrets by Phil Kelly. I'm Jen Bozier. And I'm Carrie Honey. And this is Warhammer 40k book club where we read from a crag. Every episode we discuss a book that we've selected from the Black Library's Warhammer 40,000 catalog. We post the book on our website wh40kbookclub.com along with questions to ponder during reading. Listeners are able to read the book and then tune in and hear our discussion. We encourage participation via Twitter, the site, or Encrypted Box channel. Spoiler warning, if you haven't yet read the book, go ahead and visit the site, check out the book and the questions, and then come back to this post. We'll be discussing the story from start to finish in great detail. As mentioned, this episode, we're discussing War of Secrets by Phil Kelly. The book is about a group of Primaris dark angels as they attempt to, I guess, suppress a Tau not an uprising, but a Tau group of insurgents Infestation. on a water planet. <laughs> on a water planet. And the secrets upon secrets. It's like an onion of secrets. We posted several questions to our followers and ourselves. So let's dive right in. First, did you like the book? Yes, I did. I did like the book. And I'm sorry about that. I didn't turn off my speakers. Um, I did like the book a lot. I, um, I am a Dark Angels fan as messed up as that really is. Um, so this whole time with this book, I was just like giggling, like I grew like a Cheshire cat through most of it. It's just like, oh, here it comes. Like their secrets are going to get out. Like as much as I like the Dark Angels, I would love for their cover to be blown. Right. I really liked the book. I don't like the Dark Angels. So, and this, I don't know how to say that, that this was a compliment, but I was seething mad through most of this book. Not, in a lot of ways, I think it's a sign of how well-written it was. I, justice for Maura Connie. <laughs> I, you guys, it wrecked me. Um, I was, throughout the first half, I was like, these guys are jerks. And then once you start to unpeel, start to pull off the layers of the onion, um, I was seething mad. But I enjoyed the whole way. Uh, so really liked it. But I don't I cannot recall in recent memory when I have been this angry because of a book. Because of like what was going on in the book, not because I didn't like it. it was... Yeah, so when you texted me early on me first started, you're like, I have a mad crush on Morikani and I was just like, Oh. <laughs> That's like oh, like when you told me that you had a crush on Anders. <laughs> I was like, That's nice. <laughs> Actually, yes, very similar. So at least Anders, he didn't die. He just, you know, blew up a church. Killed hundreds of innocent people. Yeah, I, you that know. was all. Yeah. Maybe he was a dark angel. Uh, <laughs> so, that's, which, that's totally valid. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. Uh, what parts of the book really stood out to you? Oh, my God. Like, I know, right? <laughs> what, what, what didn't, to be totally, so much. To be totally honest? Um, yeah, I took so many notes in this. And as I'm looking back at my notes, they're all questions that I have, which is just so fitting for a Dark Angels book. Like, True. I like first question is like, were the Dark Angels really here for another reason? Then I wrote dumb question because, of course, they are. Of course. And it's like, why did the Imperium abandon this facility? Who left that order to abandon Saltire of X? Who is Gohorael? Did Dothrael bless or curse Morikani's plasma rifle? Uh, and then I wrote 258, now I can't sleep. I don't like, remember what that was. Yeah, and then, yeah, so it's like all questions mm -hmm. in the beginning, which is, again, like it's very fitting for a Dark, Dark Angels novel. But I can't really point to like what stood out to me the most, except for, oh, probably like the very last page. So for me, one of my, so I really like movies that have an effective twist at the end, but as you can probably see from my little thing at the bottom there, one of my favorite classic movies is The Manchurian Candidate. And I also like, so actually a better example for this would be, I don't know if you remember playing the original Bioshock, at the end when it is revealed, would you kindly suddenly you start remembering back to the game and how many times would you kindly? So I love stuff like that. So as soon as they get to the part at the end, and this was one of those special, like, I was like, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> when he reveals the battle stations thing, if you remember the opening line of the book, 
is battle stations. And so, then in chapter 10... Coincidentally, page 258 was battle stations. There you go. <laughs> so for chapter 10, is that the start of chapter 10? No, no, no. No, it was where I went, now I can't sleep. It's when oh. he's putting uh, Murakani back into hypnosis. Right. So chapter 10, when I first got there, because it's like the dark angels are off doing one thing and then they're going to go back and do something and then they go off to deal and then the next chapter of the Dark Angels is them going to this world where we know as readers that Gahoriel is up to no good. But I was like, oh man, that's kind of bad writing because it's it's a little jarring and confusing. I feel like they should have explained now why and how the Dark Angels know about this. But then after the battle stations reveal, you go back and you realize the first line of chapter 10 is battle stations. Course, there's that sense of confusion so it was one of those things that at the time as i was reading and i was like well this is kind of confusing and the characters are actually a little confused by it too so i was like mm, that's weird and then you get to the end and you're like oh that was intentional yeah because so, we don't know how much time yeah. passed no we have no idea mm -hmm. how much time passed which is really top marks phil kelly because that was that was well done but i love stuff like that when you look back and you go back through the book and all of a sudden you're like eh. it's kind of like um Spoiler alert for a 20 year old movie. It's kind of like when you watch uh, The Sixth Sense and you go back. I've not seen that movie. Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's one I've actually seen. <laughs> it could go either way with you. <laughs> I know. Did that one I actually but saw in the theater? It's like that, right? When you go back and you look through it and all of a sudden it dawns on you. All oh, right, he's wearing the same outfit all the time. His reflection's not on that doorknob. Nobody's actually talking to him. Right? So I love stuff like that. And this just hit the sweet spot. <laughs> so I was like, but also enraged me because I was like, God damn it. Well, so. Dark Angel's gonna Dark Angel. <laughs> and another, <laughs> another part that I had marked as like one of my favorite parts was um, I'm trying to grab the trying to grab the exact quote, but it's where Farron basically tells Murakani, he's like, you need to stop joking around because that's not appropriate for a space marine. And Murakani's like, yeah, you know, we've been sleeping for 10,000 years. We got woken up in a time that we still don't really understand. Our current chapter is not exactly inviting and my weapon could kill me if I used it wrong. So maybe a little sense of humor and Farron's like, oh yeah, okay. I was like, I hadn't considered it that way. Because Farron was trying to really impress his Dark Angel brothers. They yeah, to be taken they seriously. were. They were trying. They really were. And, they, um, and I knew from the outset, because I was, I was always wondering, are we going to have Primaris Dark Angels? Because that would be weird. For many reasons. Right. And then when this happened, the OESR Primaris, like, oh, how's this going to be? Because I already know the OGs are not going to be happy. I mean, we thought the Imperial Fists got a little pissy with the Primaris coming in. Uh-huh. No. Uh, or um, how the Primaris with Cato, you know, because they're all, well, no, actually, they were not upset. It was the Primaris. Anyway, I knew that the OGs were not going to be very inviting because i mean they're not even inviting in their own chapter i mean how long do you have to be there before they let you in on one of the big secrets like a I, while oh yeah because you know reading um angels of darkness you know the interrogator chaplain was the only one that he knew of that was in the know of the big secret and it turned out the veteran was but he was told not to tell him that he knew it's just like oh my god like you guys like, <laughs> cue the guy with, like, the, uh, the, the cork board, <laughs> the strings, <Right. laughs> you know? Pepe Silva. Yeah, that's just kind of yeah, how exactly. I imagine uh, Azrael's uh, office looking like. <laughs> he's trying oh. to keep track with who knows Easily. what. And part of me makes me, you know, part of me wonders, like, how much, like, does Azrael really know everything? Because maybe someone's keeping stuff from him. Who knows with this chapter? Who knows with this chapter? Which is kind of why I, I like it. I like the... Uh, I don't trust them for shit. <laughs> but I kind of like this, 
you know, this total, like they have this big dark secret. They're so afraid of letting anybody know about it that they've almost forgotten who they really are. Well, so that's one of the things that stood out to me for this book, because I feel as though this book is interesting because I feel as though if you like the Dark Angels, this book will make you like them even more. And if you don't like the Dark Angels, this book will make you hate them even more. So I feel like it'll, it'll really galvanize whichever side you fall on. And one of the things that I've always argued or joked about with the Dark Angels is that when people make the jokes about them being loyalists or being, her loyalists or being heretics, I'm always like, no, they're neither. They are the Switzerland of the chapters because they are loyal to themselves first and foremost. Say what you will about the Inquisition. I'm, I make jokes all the time about how I want Robbie G to wipe them out, but how many Inquisitors have died? Imperial servants have died in the name of them hiding the secret. How many worlds have they burned in hiding the secret? And one of the things that stood out to me, and I could be wrong, it could just be me remembering this, but if you notice, they, I want to say never, but if they do, it's very, very rare. Do they ever mention the Emperor or Terra or the Imperium? They mention the chapter. They mention the lion. They mention Caliban. They are Two loyal. of these things don't long, no longer exist. <laughs> Too soon, Carrie. Oh, I'm sorry. It's 10,000 years ago, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. So, they, uh, but they are loyal to the dark angels and i feel as though this mm -hmm. book now again if you like the dark angels you'll be like oh this is amazing and if you don't justice for mara connie but even if you don't go. i would still think that you are very interested in the secret coming out oh oh yes and we'll talk a lot more about that um one of the other things that I have to say, I have to grab the line because um, it cracked me up. Oh, it's when they're charging the fort and the fort is shooting at the repulsor tank. And Farron, he thought of P Peter Call in this moment, the uh, contempt the ancient Archmagos would have had at the very idea of an enemy hoping to stop a repulsor tank with a volley of conventional shot. I loved that in the middle of a firefight, he's like, dude, Call would be so offended right now. <laughs> And after having read the Belisarius Call book, yes, I think that's accurate. <laughs> I think you'd just be sitting there going, why? Which I liked. There were a lot of little funny one-liners in here or things that made me go, mm -mm. <laughs> Well, like when Farron's like, we have no choice but to trust our brothers. I was like, these are not the brothers you trust. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> so delving into the book these primaris marines are very different than the ones we've seen previously what do you make of their devout loyalty to mars speaking of peter cole that pissed me off really it really did okay Every time they said you know you know praise the omnisci i'm like excuse you that is not the emperor that is <laughs> excuse you it's not it's you even told me that what it really is is some shard of a Catan that they're worshiping somewhere. Okay, first off, that's what heretics believe. You know... True believers know it's really the Emperor. After reading Belisarius' call, I have a feeling that's correct. It is a Catan. Excuse me, calling the Inquisition. You no, would not, I... You would not call the Inquisition because <laughs> you know how much me? they suck. Oh my um, god, I just imagine them being like the Stalin era of give me ten names. Did you right. give us Carrie, that's great. Nine more, please. <laughs> like, right. I didn't mean to call you Miss Style. <laughs> that was dark. It's been a long day. But true. But no, like it really, really bothered me. I was like, okay. Really? Yeah, it really did. It's like you guys are supposed to be acclimating in with the chapter. And mm -hmm. I think even Reboot Gulliman would have issues with that. Like, no, 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 no. The Emperor. You know, this started with the Emperor. Yes, he took this and made something more. But it took 10,000 years for us to get here after he decided, you know, to keep on playing with poor Felix. Um, so, I mean, I, I understand 
why they would have all this reverence to Mars. I was not appreciative of any of it. And it, and, it was, and I admit, it's a lot to do with the fact that I cannot stand Belisarius' call. And I'm not a big fan of the Tech Marines. They fucking creep me out. Okay, they are amazing. They creep me out. I mean, the some, of the are my favorite. some of the characters I find hysterical. Right. Other than that, just because of how matter-of-fact that they are with things. Like the guy in Knights of McCrag. Yes. Or even, uh, you know, because I'm reading um, The First Heretic right now, and there's a tech marine on the word bearer ship that is just, he's cracking me up, too, because he's just kind of like, okay, like I'm just here to do this, and, you know, I'm just here to chew gum and kick ass, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm just right. minding my own business here. Oh, look, a blood sacrifice. No, I'm just kind of doing this thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not relevant to me. Right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, like, it, it just... I guess it just felt like such a departure from who they really are. And not right. only that, but, you know, when, um, gosh, what was the name of the interior chaplain? Zafrin? Zaf uh, Zeroff. Zeroff. And he was just like, you know, do you have to keep separating yourself from us by saying from ours? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of agree with that. I mean, you guys are not fighting for Mars. Mm -hmm. Mars is fine. They are doing their own thing. No matter what happens, Mars is going to be fine. You guys are fighting for the Emperor and for the Imperium, not for Mars. So that that bothered me. See, I actually really liked it. And I'll so for me, on one hand, it made total sense to me because all of these guys were brought about by Belisarius Call. They have spent the last ten thousand years, as we learned in the Belisarius Call book, they spent the last ten thousand years getting regular visits from Call. They were not friendly visits. Um, and then they talk about how much they were raised on Mars and they got, they owe their very existence to Mars. They owe all of their technology, their armor, their weapons, they owe it all to Mars. And so I'm actually surprised we haven't seen it before. But so then as I started thinking about that, I was like, well, the other Primaris Marines we've seen have been with Reboot Gulliman. So it's one thing when you show up to the Ultramarines and you're like, oh, by the way, that's your gene father. You can touch this man. You can see him. So then that probably inspires that, okay, we are ultramarines. So even the guys who go down to the successor chapters, okay, I have seen my gene father. I know him. I have spoken with this man. And so there's that, they have that going for them. And like with the Imperial Fists, even though in, I think it was in Shroud of Night, we see, and in um, Apocalypse, mm -hmm. we see that the Imperial Fists are kind of hmm, on this whole primaris thing but they've still enveloped brought them into the fold so like the guy in shroud of night he's kind of belittling the primaris but he is still giving them imperial fist jobs and duties to do right the dark angels <laughs> make it very clear that they are a different group you are your own contingent you are not us and so and this is one of the parts that really stood out to me too and again it all makes sense in the end in the beginning, I was a little taken aback. I was like, you know, for people who keep a lot of secrets, these guys are making it really clear that they are badly obfuscating secrets. Like, they're not even making an attempt to make it look like everything's on the level. It's like they don't even care. Which, of course, then makes sense in the end because they're wiping their minds anyway, so who right. cares? But, you know, for those moments where they're sitting there, I mean, these guys, they're not even pretending like they like you. They're not even pretending like they're not keeping shit from you so my interpretation of it was that they were just falling back on what they know look we were happy on mars people on mars appreciated us shit yeah no one's told us any different mars you know that whole interaction what it really reminded me is in reading angels of darkness because the um the phone they had captured was was a terran right and it really reminded me of Kind of the animosity between the Terrans and yes. the, and the Calib Calibanites. So this really kind yes. of felt felt that way. You know what? I am actually, and we've said this a lot of times before, but I really do think we're going to start to see that because, yes, it is very much like the guys who, and I think it's in Angels of Darkness where the guy even posits, he's like, you know what? Everything was going swimmingly when we were with the Emperor. It's not until the Primarch shows yes. that we have a problem. But then he was and, like, oh, but we did, we were happy. 
We were totally <laughs> happy when we found Which the one. Liked it. Which yeah, one I was like, good. <laughs> Why would you think otherwise? But, but, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, like, <laughs> we still liked Luther better. Um, the thing that, though, that I like is that in a lot of books, especially in the Horus Heresy, um, actually, you know, uh, what was the Primark book, the Gulliman, Primark book. Do you remember there was that big thing between the guys who had done things the Terran way? Mm, yes. And the guys who were doing things the McCraggian way. Right. Which is and what there was Gulliman's that big... thing was, he was like, no, we are together. And he was pissing off Terrans mm -hmm. to bring in his his mccraggian brothers and it wasn't that he was you know going like because i've never read that book twice and reading it the second time it wasn't um it really did not appear that he was like doing favoritism mm -hmm. he was just like we we need to be together we need to work to work together and he was also trying to fight because the whole book ended up being about you know culture preserving a culture and he had the terran saying you got to keep our culture and he's like no we don't have to keep your culture why can't we merge these cultures together right which you and know also is going back to how he felt so horrible about destroying the, the culture of monarchia which is why on this planet he was like we can preserve this culture and then finds out there's nothing worth preserving right so, well, so there's that. And I think I think that you see that still in, in this millennium, too, with right. like, because when you go back to Plague War, a lot of the stuff is he's not really even he's just basically done telling people we've got Primaris Marines make it work. Right. Yeah. So I, you see that and that would probably make a big difference if you were of Gulliman. Right. And you get to see him there and he's saying, hey, you got to listen to me. When you have people who are like, you know, oh, just pay no attention to us over here. We're not, we're totally on the level, but you're not one of us. It kind of makes you wonder, like, if, um, uh, what's his name? From the Flesh Terrors, Gabriel. Oh. Yeah. If he, like, if he was given Primaris Marines. Oh, he was very clear on how he felt about that. Right. I mean, but he, it said makes he, you... he said he didn't want Ultramarines in Flesh Terror colors. Right, but again, you have to imagine, would he be similar? You guys are not one of us, <laughs> right? So that's I, kind of what that reminded me of. So I actually thought, I actually thought well, the Mars stuff was neat. Well, it's also, I think, uh, and I think it's this way with the flesh terrors as well, so it would be for the flesh terrors. It's a matter of, well, who really are you? Are you one of us? Or are you one of Gulliman's? And they talk about that in here, too. That oh, even yeah. though these guys... <laughs> I do like when Murakani is like, uh, technically we're a little bit closer related to the lion than these guys even are. Um, they still say, they're like, look, you're Gulliman's dogs. Mm -hmm. So apparently we're just going to need to wake up all the, goddamn, uh, all the goddamn Primarchs and have them be like, listen up, you primitive screw heads. I don't... I, I still, I do oh, believe... My God. A theory that the lion is next if the lion comes back oh my god this is gonna be so delicious so amazing the if... thing is with the lion though is that i give it 50 50 that he wakes up and goes what have you assholes been doing or that he wakes up and goes just as i wanted <laughs> <laughs> i feel like he's either gonna be really angry or really proud <laughs> like, well, I, well first thing i imagine him thought... imagine him saying is what happened to my planet <laughs> about that right um, um actually there's so... gonna be a lot of awkward conversations also your brother robbie g is now in charge anyway he's kind of the lord regent yeah he's like the guy and everybody else is mia anyway we have a battle of the blondes <laughs> <laughs> which you kind of already get in unremembered empire um but yeah i give it 50 50 that he wakes up and is like this is fine <laughs> But along those lines, the Dark Angels are not a welcoming bunch. So, uh, no. Yeah. The Primaris OG struggle in this, it's a little weird. I, I think we both said this, but this is probably the most aggressive we've seen. But I don't think either of us were surprised. No, I expected it. 100% expected it. It's like, they're not going to take this. They're not, they don't like being told who they can bring in. And not only that... But now they're like, oh, by the way, so you guys have to have these people. Oh, and this is a lieutenant. 
okay? <laughs> You're going to have to deal with that. So they didn't even get a chance to groom them. You know, right. what they do with their own with their own Astartes as they come in. Not only that, I mean, I the way that they talk to them, which, again, makes sense when you find out that they're mind wiping them and using them as bullet sponges. It totally makes sense, the fact that they're just like, because in the beginning, Gabriel, um, he was like, I mean, just absolutely looking down his nose at them and just being completely completely dismissive i can't imagine that that conversation would have gone well anywhere else <laughs> like i can't imagine he would have taken that particular tone had gullivan stand been standing right there for instance oh i don't um, know i really don't know you know you could be right but i would imagine that the fear of i will kill you right fucking now i don't know i don't know but um I wasn't surprised. Basically reading through this book was me going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, it was pretty much everything I assumed. And I did not assume that they were mind wiping them and using them as bullet sponges. But when I got to that, I was like, oh, this all makes sense. Same. <laughs> same. As angry as it made me, I was like, yeah. oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Like, I got that same feeling when they said battle stations, like I wrote down here, now I can't sleep, is the same feeling I got in Bioshock with the would you kindly. Would you kindly. Um. It wasn't when it was written on the wall. Because I saw that, I was like, well, that's kind of weird. And then when they explain it, it's like, oh, son of a bitch. Um, yeah, exactly. All of a sudden you're like, oh, this all makes sense now. Right. It is kind of the same thing here. But when it happened, I was like, I can't believe they're doing that. I can so believe they're doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I guess for me, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, so I already assumed the worst of you guys. And... You, you rose to the occasion. Well, so what I originally thought, you know, when Farron <clears throat> had to go to the apothecary and he was like, man, why is my armor, why did they like erase the data from, from my armor? And, and you could hear some recordings where they were talking about what they were made of. What I thought was going on was they were kind of dissecting them and right. examining and be like, well, how can we make this, you know, in, in the future, just to kind of see how things tick. That's what mm -hmm. I thought. I didn't realize it was actually much worse. Like so much worse. So for me, I think when they first, so my first thought is I was like, oh no, he has the side plague. And um, <laughs> one of the things is like, oh, cause oh, the headaches. Yeah. I was like, yeah. okay, every, everyone's a psyker now. Um, <laughs> that would have been interesting. But I wasn't sure about that. And then, yeah, the whole thing with them erasing the data. Again, when they erased the data, I was like, well, that's, that's like not even subtle. Like that's them like just being like, yeah, we're fucking with you. So, but again, they didn't understand the Primaris Marines. And so it all, again, it was like a paint by number where all of a sudden something gets painted in. You're like, oh, it's a giraffe. But in this case, it's Dark Angel fuckboys. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like the First Legion. They are, they are not nice people. I'm just saying. Um, no, well, I mean, so when Morikani's Promethean Flamer exploded, I immediately turned back a few pages. The plasma weapon. And he blesses it. Right, because I'd actually had written it down on page oh, 239. Really? Like when, when it happened, I was like, I, I even wrote, did he bless or curse it? And then I got to the explosion and I immediately went right back. I was like, that was sabotage. Even before he told Farron to sabotage, I was like, that's really obvious what just, what just happened there. But I couldn't but believe that they went that far. Only but... that if you were looking for it, right? Because mm -hmm. like, I like when he's like, oh, it was sabotaged by the first. Farron's like, no. That's not, that can't be possible. Except that it was. Oh yeah. That was, <sighs> telling you guys, the Dark Angels. So on another side of weirdness going on in this book, the Tau now have warp capabilities. Mm -hmm. um, sort of. Sort of, they have like, yeah. It's like we're driving, humanity's driving Ferraris and they just got themselves a Ford Pinto. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it totally could go on the highway too. <laughs> nice. Until someone dings the bumper. 
<laughs> right? It's because they're made of flint. Anyways, Gen X humor. Um, <laughs> what you don't know what we're talking about? Just go look up the Ford Pinto and then watch Top the Secret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a little famous for that. Um, so a lot's going on in here. What do you think is this consequence of their ha- being in the warp? Like the long-term consequences. And what do you make of their savior? Talking about the Tau? Mm-hmm. Man, I wrote down their savior. Who was the savior? I didn't... I thought I wrote so the down. savior, if you recall, it's this multi-armed... At first I thought it was Slanesh. I was like, oh, snap, that's Slanesh. But no, um, it's this kind of multi-armed, angry, happy god thing that basically cuts them open a wormhole and pushes them through. And they decide... Hmm. That it is a god-ish thing given birth by humans who believe in the greater good. So it is the warp perversion of the greater good. Oh, right. You know what? Actually, I took that to be with Slanesh. I, it, it's the multi-arm thing. With well, all it's the not, different it's arms. only that, but they said something that was birthed. Well, the Eldar birthed Slanesh. Right, but oh, sorry, I got part the, of me wonders. I got the party memes in <laughs> When you murder fuck a god into an existence. <laughs> That's my favorite meme. Jazz music stops. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we we spent too much time on Reddit. Um oh. that but also so at first I thought it was Slanesh, but then I'm wondering if this is something else. Is it just a maybe it's just a face of Slanesh? Is it, it just a face of one of the existing gods? Could be Zinch, he's you know, a natural. I mean, we already saw him in this book anyways. I mean, Zinch, you know, was well, it the architect of fate, the master planner? He can appear as anything that he wants absolutely. to. Absolutely. And it was Zinch and Zinch's demons that helped uh, Magnus get through the warp in the webway. So why wouldn't he help someone else get through the warp again? Exactly. Why wouldn't he absolutely be like, oh, I'm kind of like your greater good. There you go. Totally bye. They, um, that's kind of weird, but I also liked the idea that, so the Tau, they didn't have warp capability, and it sounds like their souls are very dim. So they're, <laughs> sounds right. like, so like a weird insult, doesn't it? <laughs> like, you have a very dim soul, madam. Well, unlike the Eldar. Right. Who burn bright, bright, bright. Mm-hmm. So, but, it sounded to me like when they were in, so years and years ago, my husband and I were driving through the country club area, which is like the hoity toity Richie Richville. And we got a flat tire and we had to pull off into one of the neighborhoods and we had to change our tire. And there were people like coming out of their houses, looking at us because we were driving a piece of shit Honda, like looking at us like, you're in the wrong neighborhood, darlings. <laughs> I have never felt so out of place and awkward in my life. I'm like, we're the poor people. Um, it really, that's the only thing I could think of when I was reading them describing being in the warp. It was almost as if the demons were looking at them like, you're not supposed to be here. Because <laughs> it talked about them laughing and weird. Yeah, it's like, kind of like, kind of, you guys are lost. I kind of imagined it like in an aquarium, except that the fish are turning and laughing at you. Right? You know, just, They're oogling at you. Yeah, it's like, what are you doing here? Well, you're different. I said anything right. like you before. Do we want to play with you? <laughs> you know, just... Right. There was a lot of that. I don't know if you're worth our time or not. Like, like the sharks circling. Like, hmm, don't know yet. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But again, <laughs> I the thing that gave me the most concern was that I think it's twice Blade. He basically comes to the conclusion that this warp shit is crazy, and. The humans clearly are the ones feeding this. So we really need to not be bringing any more of them into our fold. They all need to die. And on one hand, those guys all get, you know, messed up. But I can't imagine, given the Tau with the whole mind control thing and their propensity to group think anyways, they can't be the only people who come to that conclusion. Oh, it, I mean, at the at the end, you know, after Twice Blade... Is kind of being hauled off to be executed. Um, they kind of mention that. They they talk about that. Yep. So it's uh 
I feel like that'll so have... So we're having, like, all the range. aliens to come out to play? I mean, we got Tyranids. I mean, the orcs are always, you know, fucking up something. I actually loved that the Kroot were in this. I love the Kroot as a race. They are so much fun. So <laughs> the chapters with them I thought were great. Absolutely I love the Kroot. Oh, a lot. Oh. Just just when they're describing the smell. Oh uh, yeah, no, that's not. I don't want to hang out with the crew, but I do like when they show up. I'm always like, y'all are so funny. Um, I, you know what though? Having said that, those are the only parts of the book that I really struggled with with the Tao sections. I I'm same so here about the Tao. That's because I I don't like the Tao. I I don't. Which is so funny because if you think about it, with the last Phil Kelly book that that we read we loved the orc sections and found the ultramarine sections boring but that was the insane martin wasn't it no that was phil kelly no blood of ax i'm looking at oh no it's robbie, robbie mcniven oh shit wrong guy wrong guy wrong guy strike that i take that back <laughs> right no because i was like no the last phil kelly story i read was in the horror novel and it was good um he's writing i feel bad because phil kelly's writing a Tao book and I'm sure it's going to be really good because I really like his writing well, style. Well, there I are just... people who like to play as the Tao. Those people are wrong. They are wrong. Sorry, I'm just kidding. You, you do you. I like the Iron Warriors, so I have no judgment. No, it's better um, than the space communists. <laughs> the fish people. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, the Tao. I really struggled with the Tao chapters. Not because they were poorly written or anything. I just, the whole time I was like... I just don't care. I don't care about any of you guys. It, it was interesting. I liked the stuff. That, again... There were a lot of little nuggets of interesting stuff in there, but it's kind of like, I don't, I just don't like the Tao. Well, I thought it was really funny with the whole thing though, at the end, you know, he releases, you know, that greatest weapon or whatever that guy Kais was. or whatever. And he doesn't get the job done because the Angels of Absolution ended up outsmarting him in the very end. Mm -hmm. It just started making me giggle of thinking about all of the uh, Tao melee memes Oh I'm God! Right. Yes, yes. That I had the same reaction to, where I was just like, "This is why you don't go close combat, Tao." Was, I, the whole time, it's like, poor guy, just tried so hard, didn't you? <laughs> just, oh, pumpkin! You just couldn't get there. <laughs> you thought you were winning. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. At the same time, though, I did laugh when he was waiting outside the throne room. He's like, "I can wait out here forever," because one of them is going to talk. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Pretty much. And sure enough, they did. He's like, yeah, like ding, microwave's ding. up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I, I like again. There were some good parts in it, but in the whole fact that now they are having to realize because they're also a very non secular group, and they even say like when he's talking when a uh, twice blade is describing what he saw in the warp Kais is like mm -hmm, yeah no all of this can be easily explained away as hallucinations mass hallucinations um and just figments of your imagination this is none of this is real but i do like how there's twice blade is like <laughs> no friend this stuff is real so i like this idea because we've talked about how this series especially seems to be really setting up the new world of warhammer 40k post rift and now the tower kind of vaguely aware that maybe there's a reason some of the humans flock to you. It's because this chaos shit is bonkers. <laughs> and the Imperium's having some trouble. Anyway. <laughs> so. Oh, when is it not? Valen. It's been having trouble for 10,000 years. You know, everything was going fine. <laughs> Until Lorgar found religion. <laughs> Which you're reading now. Um, mm. So transitioning back over to the Space Marines. The thousand dollar question what is Farron's game here what do you where do you think his loyalties ultimately are i, I did write down one quote from the, on the last page 377 he had a feeling that within the brotherhood of the dark angels keeping silent would prove the most useful skill of all yep i think or i would like to think he is biding his time I would because like one to thing think that, as well. Because one thing, and you know, I made this joke to you that you didn't appreciate when you said, when you were upset about Morkani dying, I was like, he did not play the Game of Thrones well. And it's true. Uh, but the Dark Angels, it's all the Game of Thrones. It is. No, um, it's, 
he was actually a very and i actually had the same thought as soon as he started talking i was like oh you are not dark angel material oh no when he started talking I'm like no pumpy no 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 you just don't <laughs> you don't put all your cards stop. on the table dude especially not yeah. when you're on a surgical slab i mean right <laughs> i think at that i don't i don't actually know what his ploy was there i um yeah i'm not sure what his game was there the i think he was but, just mad and let his emotions get the best of him and just reacted yeah, I agree. I think he was just like, he's mad as hell and he's not going to take this anymore. But I, I refuse to you believe. You twisted sister. No, oh, that's from uh, Network, that movie with, uh, what's his face? Albert Finney screaming, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yeah, that's why I said twisted sister, because we're not going to take it. Oh, well, yes, but no, the quote's from Network. It's actually not a very good movie, but like boomers love it. Um, it's one of those movies that I'm not, I'm not gonna finish that because then I'll have to say the line. Anyways, um, we so I have to believe after finding out that you have been used as a bullet sponge multiple <laughs> times, these people have been jacking with your memories for God knows how long. They murdered your best friend. They treated with the Tau. They tried to wipe out their own successor chapter to hide a secret. I can't imagine that Farron is like, but they're accepting us as one. And, you know, gosh darn it, we just got to make the best of a bad situation. I don't know if Farron believes that they killed Murakani. Fair, but he does know everything else. I don't think he knows about the Angels of Absolution. Um, yeah, no, remember, because when Murakani's talking to him and he says, he's like, we're going back to kill their the Tao's people because they can't. They're taking out the Angels of Absolution. Oh, that's right. That's right. So he knows about that. He knows about all of it. He knows that they sabotaged and killed, at least tried to kill Morikani if mm. they don't know that he died. And I just cannot imagine Farron. You know, Farron has been throughout the entire book, maybe a little naive, maybe a little idealistic, right? With the whole deal thing. He saves her life twice. I did really like when he kills her the third time because he's just like, nope, you don't learn. <laughs> oh my god, like that whole thing that she did just made me so mad. Me like, too. It's like, you have this ch chance for redemption. You know, we still don't exactly know who put in that order to not evacuate the planet. You know, that mm -hmm. was one mystery that was, that was never solved. He is giving you this chance to help evacuate the planet. And then what I have to imagine it was the Dark Angels, just because they knew Goheriel was in the area. The thing that makes me think about or it... Or was it Goheriel that did it? Um, <laughs> yeah, because remember, he leaves. Right. He leaves the planet. Like, but the, but the point is, like, she's given this chance oh, yeah. to redeem herself, come back to the Imperium, save all of these people, many people as she can, and what does she do? Goes back to another group of aliens. Right, and she even says that she's like, look... I no longer believe in the Tau. But she also doesn't believe in the Imperium, obviously, right. because she's, again, she's working with the Kroot. And the Kroot, guys, like, I mean, even if you could maybe, like, if the Dark Angels can justify working with the Tau, because this is one of the civilized races, I mean, working with the Kroot or the Loxital, that's like a step above working with the Orcs, okay? An important step. But a step nonetheless it reminds me of um in mass effect like working with the vorcha or something yeah. like that right and being like yeah. this is fine um or uh the other warmonger race the batarians the batarians yeah they're very similar i'd say the like, the vorcha is similar to the crute yeah the vorcha are very similar and so there's no like you can't even like squint at that and be like no i understand where she's coming from on this no, oh, dumbass. As soon as she went to the cruise ship. And again, I think it's the mark of a good writer when I was kind of on board with her. Because I was like, okay, yeah, I, I get when she lays out her sob story, you're like, okay, I understand why you made this mistake, right? I was actually really on board with Deal's character. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she goes and talks to the crew. And the whole time I'm like, you idiot. Was not happy. But again. No, but she was going to die anyway. She had the psyker plague. Yeah, she probably was. But the fact that it was Farron, who was like, I am disappointed. Mm -hmm. 
that was I, I felt and honestly I have a feeling that that might have been why they got inducted into the chapter I well that yeah. is why because they were like you know hold we're gonna see how this plays out right <laughs> Well, because God, I mean, they crack me up so much. The Dark Angels, this is the oh, stuff that they decide. No, 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 no. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Just... Well, and I also, I love how when he talks, when he's inducting them, he's basically like, "Yeah, you guys are just too tough of an asset for us to waste." Like, <laughs> that's not exactly warm and fuzzy. It's basically like, eh, we just don't really have much of a choice here. You're too useful. Well, that they oh, did, and okay. they did. They did prove that they were they yes. were loyal to the Imperium, and that they were not going to let this human, you know, sway them. Mm -hmm. um, especially like being around the Tau and everything, that they were not getting swayed by by any of that. So I think right, I, I know that, that that's it, and I think that I imagine Farron felt very much between a rock and a hard place. I'm sure he did. It's like okay, Reboot has to know what's going on here. So that's my big question but is, is I can't Baron let tell them, him. I think he does like when he can. Now the question is, when can he? Because he's going to be on a very short leash. So that's one thing too, is that Zeroff says, okay, you're the circle primaris now, but I don't believe for a goddamn second, two things. One, I don't believe that they're not going to keep them on a very, very short leash. God knows how. But also, remember the reason that the mind control thing didn't work is because they didn't understand how the Primaris Marines worked. Now they do. So what's to stop them from trying the same trick now that they have a better understanding of how the furnace works? I don't trust the Dark Angels. No, I, I, I mean, trust issues with these people. And that, that, that's a very valid question, but I think that also has to go back to Azrael's court. What, what, what Azrael is going to say, because I can't right. imagine any Dark Angel, especially if they're going to be loyal to the Dark Angels, that they would go against Azrael. And I'm pretty sure Azrael probably did come down and everybody would be like, look, <laughs> a Primarch has returned and he said we have to do this play nice all of you oh i don't know as the dark angel i would imagine him saying give the illusion of us playing nicely well right just appear to play to play nice but you know <laughs> keep just, appearances everyone appearances you know if they accidentally die in battle well, ah, omelets and eggs right right yeah you guys can go be our meat shields but i think you know with them even like mentioning to them the fallen and admitting yes there's the fallen maybe in some way they might hope that they can get them to understand why they do this with the fallen right which is possible as well because they, they would do... not want their own le legion or chapter to be um branded as a traitor right for sure and he does say and it's this is going to be some double agent shit because mm -hmm. he does say at the end he says that you can pursue leads that we can't not only with the in the ultima founding and the works of the primarch gulliman but also the martian priesthood so but right and again there's also there's also my thing about them being loyal to only themselves you will put the agendas of the chapter as stated by your superiors before all other concerns mm -hmm. like yeah they're they're they are not only are they realizing, oh, I think that we can work with them, but it's also, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you guys actually would be kind of useful because you know you a lot could, of stuff that we you, know. You could get close to Gulliman for us and find out what he's up to or what the tech what about are up call? to. Right. All of that. Mm -hmm. How many more Primaris are there? You know, is this what we're going to have to have from now on? You know, just. Oh, yeah. They all kinds of stuff that they can learn now. Um, Somehow I don't imagine Gulliman coming to the rock and hugging Asriel all the way he pretty much, much did Dante. No. 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 I don't picture anybody hugging Asriel. First off, I don't picture the Dark Angels being huggers. Oh, you don't think the lion was a hugger? No. <laughs> I imagine he would have just been confused. Like, what even are you doing right now? You're touching um, me. Why? Yeah, exactly. Bad touch. Um, and I know we kind of touched talked about this a little bit already, but 
How did you feel ultimately about Deal's arc and her ultimate fate? Well, I mean, I, I liked it. It was, uh, I thought it was, so one thing that they talked about very early on, and it's something that they talk about every single time we bring in the Primaris, it's their lack of experience. Yes, yes. they have this incredible biology, and they're bigger, better, faster, more, but mm -hmm. they don't have the battle experience. And I not think Deal for him was not just battle experience, but was just real world experience for him. Human experience, as it were. Right. You know, I laughed very hard when he ripped off Gabriel's cloak. <laughs> oh my God. I laughed so hard and, at that. And, you know, gave it to her to wrap up. And he was basically like, hey. <laughs> like, oh, he was livid. That's mine. Um, and I could kind of understand why he wanted to help. Because I was kind of on that side too. It's like, yeah, I totally understand. Like, you know, she oh, doesn't, yeah. she doesn't deserve. This. I totally get this. But then, same time, you know, he gets there. He's like, why did you do this? Like, I helped you, and now you're like trying to kill me. And she's like, but we had no choice. And he's like, there's always a choice. There's always a choice. Well, and I thought the thing that I liked about it, as pissed with her as I was, it made sense. This is a woman who originally turned to the Tao. Was so, a priestess of the Tao. Yeah, a priestess of the Tao. So of course, of course, she would turn to the crew. She would turn to some other Xenos race, especially one that was friendly with the Tao, right? Because the crew are basically the, one of the, um, they're the melee combat arc of the Tao. Um, so of course it made sense. Because I was so angry with her, like, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> you do have a bit of a track record here. Um, so I liked her arc a lot and I liked, I thought that she played not a good villain, but a good lesson, as you said, mm -hmm. like this is no, she sometimes she wasn't a villain for sure. She wasn't a villain, but I think it also showed that with the dark angels, that even a broken watch is right twice a day. Right. Like when they're like, yeah, we need to kill this person. Cause she treated with the towel and he's like, Oh, that's so harsh. No, they were right. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe they're callous ways come from experience too well i was also just like man they're so like their father i mean seriously because the lion would have been the same way and be like no i don't need to explain myself why do i need to sugarcoat it and be nice no this is just how it is like yeah, just trust me right i'm smart pretty much so the biggest question the fifty thousand dollar question where do the Dark Angels go from here? Oh the my Angels God. of Absolution. I can't wait. Oh the my Angels God. of Absolution now, or at least one of them, the Chapter mm -hmm. Master. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he found a skull, one of the skulls that was the little chaos -y guys, branded with the Dark Angels. Mm. You have Farron. You now have this new Circle Primaris, and we have no idea where their loyalties lie. Wow. Wow. Play. <laughs> <laughs> like jumping ahead of thought in my mind this whole the stuff with the Tao how well do the Dark Angel secrets keep and I'm not just talking about the, I mean the fact that they made they brokered a deal with the Tao and yeah of course they're insulting them but they still brokered a deal with them mm -hmm. how well do these secrets keep well with the uh, well the, with the Angels of Absolution I mean on the one hand <laughs> There's nothing about the Tau attack that was really... Oh, never mind. I was like, doesn't that Tau that links it back? Yes, it does. I forgot because they gave him the skull. Which is from Dark Angels. So the question is with that, does he go to Asriel about that? Because if he does, then he's going to have, you know, a Prometheum accident on the way out. Yeah. Plasma. Um, or does he go to the Lord Regent? You know, I would like to think, or part of me wonders, like, do you think the angel's absolution, do you think he sees this dark angel skull and he's like, you know, this explains a lot. <laughs> like, I've always had some questions and there's always been this weird secretiveness or part of me. So I think it goes either one of two ways. I think either he looks at this and he says, yeah, this explains a lot. I'm going straight to the Lord Regent. Or were they kept so in the dark that he does go to Azrael because he's like, I need some explanations for this shit's weird. What else do you say about it, right? Because 
I would like to imagine that, I guess it just depends on how far removed they are from the secret of nature of the Dark Angels, because would his first reaction be, this doesn't make any sense. There's no way that our chapter's got problems. There's no way that even our people, any of our mm-hmm. people would be with chaos. Is this just some, like, is Gahariel just some lone asshole? Which is why I think he might go to Asriel. I think he might be right. And just be like, hey, like, well, you, you guys, just, just, oh, BT dubs, just, just so you know, or more like FYI, just so you know, what are your guys is bad. <laughs> <laughs> One of you guys has a problem painted with armor find black. Out who that is? Yes, we will get right on that. We can yes. just help him to his ship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let me bless your ship. Exactly. Um, I don't know. Do you think? I I guess again, if does he have that type of? And yes, I'm going to say this word: uh, devious mind, because. My husband and I actually went back and forth because I used the word devious and he was like, they're not devious. They're just calculating. They're devious AF. That's that's the same thing. No, because calculating is more like a devious has a more sinister tone to it, which I think the Dark Angels, okay. I think they are definitely right. more devious. You know what? Potato, potato here. All right. When it comes to the no. Dark Angels. Yes. No. Yes. Um. But do, does he have that kind of devious mind where he could start to put two and two together and say that, okay, the skull, the Tau, why would the Tau have had this? Why were the Tau even here? That's kind of weird. Like, I don't know. Because he seems like such an openly two? entrusting guy. He, also not very dark angel I also, like, as I was reading through him, I was like, you're not a very good dark angel either. Like when he just allowed that guy who was possessed... Well, because, like, he looked at it and he's like, okay, this guy, okay, clearly something warpy going on with this. Throw him in jail. Anyways, <laughs> it's like, okay, but, oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Oh, shit. No, hmm, wait a minute. Something's weird here. Because I just remembered one of the scenes. Do you remember when the guy comes up and he's like, I need to talk to the angels. And that little robot guy is like, nope. And he's like, no, 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 I have a message. I need to talk to the angels. And they're like, nope. And he says, it's from an angel in black. And all of a sudden they're like, protocol overridden. Please come this way. (laughs) So, yeah, I actually, I think that then the big problem there would be, because that would imply, because remember, as soon as he says the angel in black, even even the um, chapter master is kind of like, yeah, great. This is all bad. Go to jail. Um, Do they have a knowledge? Is that something that he doesn't know that his robots know? Like, was that, was the servitor? Like, that was programmed by the Dark Angels to be like, oh, somebody mentioned an angel in black. Oh, shit. Could be. I don't know. Could be. But <laughs> nothing would surprise me. I, I could uh, see them having those kind of contingencies. Seriously. Like, somebody mentions anybody in black armor. Five alarm fire. Just uh, because I just can't imagine the Dark Angels letting their, their successor chapters know anything. I just can't either. Or maybe that just becomes, like... Maybe that's one of the burdens that the chapter master and the chapter master alone has to know. Like, don't tell any of your dudes, but this might come up in conversation. Like, I don't know. Again, because they do, they are a very secretive bunch. But I did, I forgot about that scene. So that has to be somewhere someone some somehow knows that this is a warning sign. Um, but then you also have Farron, so which we secrets. talked about. Yeah, what, where do the Dark Angels go from here? <laughs> I don't know, happens, but it's going to what be... What happens if Gulliman gets hold of this information? Oh, it's... Either way, it... Okay, I can't say either way. Because if it goes where... Let's say Angel of the Absolution guy goes to Azrael, he has a car accident on the way out. Oh, well... Falls down an open yeah. elevator shaft. Right. That's done. And then Farron learns about the fallen and then he gets, he, he becomes a sympathizer. He's like, okay, I totally understand why they're doing this. I am 100% loyal to the chapter. Then we're just back to the status quo. Right. And the, the rift with the rift and Gulliman this whole time, it's been this big, like we're just yanking the tablecloth out from underneath this perfectly set bank banquet and I would love for that to happen with the Dark Angels. Just to make something change. Like, something big. 
And it's not that right. I'm saying I want them to become suddenly like a traitor legion or, or anything. But um, just like 10,000 years. Maybe they years, can switch places with the Alpha Legion. You know, 10, The 000... Alpha Legion will finally come back and be like, we are loyalists. And the Dark Angels are like, we have problems. <laughs> yeah. We need to go. Well, we're loyal. Lose a legion, gain a legion. It's like, we're loyal to us. <laughs> right? Like, we're Switzerland. Sorry. Actually, it, I need to make a jar that says, like, Night Lords. And I put a dollar in it every time I mention the Night Lords. But, um, you the should. Dark Angels. I know, or I should, really. <laughs> the night, the dark, it's going to be like a cussing jar. Um, but in the Night Lords omnibus, they really talk about, and actually a lot of the Dark Night Lords uh, series or books talk about this too, is that they don't care about chaos, really. Some of some of them use the gods, but really as a legion, they're totally fragmented. They don't care. They're not on board with Abaddon. They don't care about any of the Primarchs except for the Night Haunter. They're doing all of their stuff kind of semi in the name of the Night Haunter. They're not, you wouldn't call on them in a fight in this millennium, right? They're not, similar to the Dark Angels, you're not calling on them in a fight. <laughs> like while well, balls being devastated right they could call out and the dark angels would be like are there any other dark angels there maybe we're in black because if not we don't give a shit or they could just right, send like, their bullet sponge primaris oh, to do it i mean you think about it with them also keeping more, the keeping with the primaris it kind of serves like two purposes for them they can send them to be like this is the face of the dark angels right it's like, see, we're we're loyal. We do good stuff. Oh yeah, and now we're all gonna, of a sudden the dark angels are helpful, and we're gonna go look for the fallen while you guys are, are doing that. Right. I actually thought that's actually what I was thinking at first. So, so like when Farron helped deal in the very beginning, I was like, oh, I knew it. It's finally gonna be a helpful branch of the dark angels. It's gonna be all the Primaris guys because they're off, you know, looking at that pretty bird over there, while everybody else is off doing the real work. Um. Of course not, silly. They're, they're still not going to be helpful. Um, it's, uh, yeah. I, I'm i with you. I just want it to be, I just want Gulliman to find out about this. Because I'm curious, honestly curious what he would think. Because, and I may write an article about this, because it's been 10,000 years. It has been. It's been a very long time. Okay, it's not been that long for Gulliman. <laughs> It's just been a hundred since he woke up. Um, right. But it's been a very long time. And I think, and he is such a reasonable person because he's got the diplomat in him. And I think if maybe not all the Dark Angels, but like Azrael kind of came to him and be like, okay, look, this is what happened 10,000 <laughs> years problem. ago. This is the problem. And... We're so afraid because 10,000 years ago, I totally understand why they were so afraid because that was a time of, we don't know who's traitor and who's loyal. And they would right. have been just carte blanche, branded as traitors and all killed. Um, but 10,000 years, things are different. Um, I'm pretty sure they could talk to Reboot and he would understand and he might even try to help them. He might. I go back and forth on it, honestly. Because, so one of the things that I really liked recently, actually reading the, uh, I thought I had it just sitting right here, um, reading the Lehman Russ Primark book, he, there's a moment at the end between Lehman Russ and the lion, they go through the whole fight. So mm -hmm. if you haven't yet read that book, I highly recommend it. Um, but there's a moment at the end when they both get to Terra, the lion and Russ get to Terra. It is post-war everything's fucked up they the emperor's been put on the throne um russ and the lion have this awful understanding between one another because they realize that they're the only two primarchs who were absent from terra and nobody knows why that there's always going to be this asterisk next to them mm -hmm. that you guys weren't here because reasons right everybody else was either dead or established as being busy. So there's this weirdness about it. And I don't know how Reboot would feel about that either. Like, yeah, you were the one who, you were always a secretive asshole. Because like after the events of, um, they have this heart to heart in the Unremembered Empire, 
when it finally gets revealed that it's Conrad Kurz that's on the planet. Mm -hmm. And of course, he looks at the lion and he's like, you brought Conrad Kurz here and you didn't think to tell me? And he loses his shit on the lion and is like, this has always been your problem. You don't communicate at all. So I don't know. And we've already talked about how the reboot element of this millennium is very different from the pre, from even the heresy reboot. Not very different, but he definitely is a little angrier. He's also mad as hell. I'm not going to take it anymore. Um, well, you know, we wake, know up ten, we wake up 10,000 years later and oh, by the way, everything you were fighting against, that's what's actually happening now. <laughs> yeah. I just reading this book. So after Apocalypse, um, it's just like the laundry list. I just imagine like his inbox, right? Because it's after Apocalypse, like, oh, by the way, do you remember that word bearer you had us lock up? Fun story, right? Like he's got that on his plate and then he's got all these other things and then just adding this on too, right? That, oh, by the way, one of those Primaris that you sent, he's discovered some shit. Like, I just imagine this poor guy just being like, Oh my God! <laughs> like, Why didn't I just stay dead? <laughs> I know, like, I'm just gonna take the armor off. Like, just let the poison do its work. Jesus, take the wheel, slenish. Anyways, or just you know, Fulgrim, come on, man. <laughs> just, right? just, just go back to Mortarian and just be like, dude, do just, me a favor. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, again, we read all these books, and a lot of the conversations come back to. What's Gelliman going to say about this? <laughs> the poor guy. That was my first well, thought when I got to the end of the book. Because I was like, oh boy. Because, because it's so much fun. Oh, it's so much fun. A Primark 10,000 years old. Older than that, actually. But kind of be like, oh, by the way. So this is coming out now. <laughs> right? Well, and that's, and I just, I want them to wake up the lions so bad. I want them to wake up so bad because I really want to see how he reacts to it either way. And to be honest, again, as a person who doesn't like the dark angels, I would be satisfied with either one because either one would make, would not surprise me. If he wakes up and he's like, you what? Or if he's like, excellent, good job. Let's keep doing this. <laughs> either one. I'd be like, Oh, lion, <laughs> typical lion. Yeah, it's, oh man. I was just thinking, so, like, or Lion could go tell Reboot that Conrad, no, wait, he wouldn't go tell him anything. Because no, that's not his way. No, that's, that's what we need, is for them to reveal that Conrad's not actually dead. It's just been the world's greatest magic trick. Well, I was going to say, that, that, years. that's why he wasn't there. It's because. Oh, yeah, no, he would never. Like, okay, so fun fact, they kind, they kind of dance around it. In the unremembered empire where he's kind of like you know oh, we, we had some problems um danger will robinson um yeah so this book i went i think overall i'm so happy we read this book i liked it way better than ashes of prospero or um devastation of ball and we talked about this before the podcast but i still think this is like the worst named series the conquest series there have been no conquests it has all been revelations revelations as, and changes or as i said they're conquests of the soul get out of here with that hallmark shit <laughs> like, i'm no. not wrong that's not the point right now <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no you're not um but yeah it's it, it's such a poorly named series and yet the first two books again i wasn't super crazy on but because remember right after this is uh apocalypse it's getting better no there's actually one in between which one uh, iron and courage or iron and honor iron and courage it's by ian saint martin that's why we haven't read it <laughs> oh yeah right anyways <laughs> moving along um We'll get to it eventually, I'm sure. But this, I really like this. I feel like this has set up the Dark Angels in a great position. I am super excited to see where it goes next. Right. <laughs> so, like with the, so with going back to De Devastation of Ball, 
that set up everything nicely and that you know what we have way too many successor chapters so we're just yes. wiping the slate clean and now we got flesh terrors of blood angels and huzzah we're moving on okay so that's just kind of nice but there's not but there's no big like i can't wait to see what happens next um it's fair ashes of prospero there was the i'd probably be much happier with ashes of prospero if the thousand sun didn't stay in the portal um yes uh but agreed i, I but at the same time i think this is a big move for the space wolves and that they're bringing out more of their original of the original brothers and oh by the way we just learned that it was horus who told them to yeah. destroy everything so now we're gonna have to unpack all of that we're gonna have to talk this out with our therapist a little bit but yeah, same, that's true. There is that, but it's still not a, um, how is this going to change everything now? Whereas. That's fair. This book and Apocalypse were just like, oh, things are happening. Like, such big <laughs> oh, things. Really? So along those lines, our next book that we're reading, we're going back to Chris Wright, um, is the Vaults of Terra, Carrion Throne. And. So my husband has already gone ahead and read both of the Vaults of Terra books ahead of us, because of course he has. Um, but he said that not as many world-changing things in the Carrion Throne, but some world-changing things in the next one. All I can say is just looking at the cover, I think Chris Wright is generally, genuinely worried that the custodies are lonely. Well, now they have a buddy cop thing going on here. <laughs> <laughs> we have Tanau and Valerian. So Valerian got a friend. This guy's going to get a friend. Yeah, he He's gets, just... He gets a, a Inquisition friend. I don't think I want that for a friend. I wouldn't want that friend. That's Especially he's lame, Ordo Her Hereticus. Not lame. That's the word I'm looking for. Not lame. That's, uh, that's a little uh, concerning. Mm -hmm. That's the word. <laughs> it's not lame. It's concerning. Concern. I don't want to be friends with him. Exactly. Concern. Especially the Ordo Hereticus. You don't really want to be friends with them. But maybe this is one of the good guys. Does that exist? They might. <laughs> We're going to find out, aren't we? I mean, um, I yeah, mean so next one is a heretic. Was in the beginning. I mean. <laughs> Before he turned his friend into a demon host. Raffiner was a good guy. I thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you want to take us out, Carrie? I suppose. I don't know what to think now about Ravener. Anyway. So you have listened Fine. to the Warhammer 40k book club episode regarding War of Secrets by Phil Kelly. Be sure to join us for our next book where we check out another series of Chris Rate, Vaults of Terra, The Carrion Throne. Yes, random Imperial citizen, you are welcome. We are finally getting to this series. Yes. We, we are an unofficial book club and not affiliated with the Black Library or any of its affiliates. You can find both the vidcast and podcast on our website, wh40kbookclub.com. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, give a review, and all those good things to the vidcast on YouTube or the podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Our site also has articles about our adventures in reading other Warhammer 40k books and short stories outside of the book club books. So please stay a while and read from a crag. Good night, everybody. Good night.